Hello. Well, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, just like a few uh, weeks ago when I talked about uh, Videodrome for its 40th anniversary, I thought, you know, kind of going back to some, uh, some of the movies I really enjoy and uh, seeing ones that are, have certain anniversaries. And one was a film that I have already talked about. Uh, which is, of course, A Fish Called Wanda. Um, this is a very good film. Um, again, I've talked about this about four years ago, five years ago. I don't know. It's been a while. But, you know, this film is, a, is just hilarious. Um, I sort of want to just highlight it again. Um, it's an insane <laughs> kind of film. Uh, uh, you know, uh, John Cleese, who co-wrote this film, plays Archie Leach, who <laughs> well, as the back describes it, a weak-willed barrister who finds himself embroiled a quartet of ill-matched jewel thieves. Two American Connors, played by Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Klein, who are posing as siblings. Or not, obviously. Uh, Michael Palin's uh, animal-loving hitman and <laughs> London gangster Tom George, uh, Georgeson. <laughs> and, uh, and Georgeson is uh, arrested, and only he and Palin know the whereabouts of the diamonds, prompting uh, uh, plenty of farce and infighting, as well as some embarrassing nudity and unfortunate demise of some innocent uh, pooches. This is a very hilarious film, and I've talked about this again before. Um, and overall, this uh, set really has primarily a lot of the special features. The, uh, the DVD set that I have previously, and a few more things like a new appreciation uh, by... Vic Pratt of the FBI National Archive, a new in interview from production designer Roger Murray Leach. Um, and this version of the film, which is from my Arrow video, um, I noticed wasn't really uh, something uh, that Arrow themselves really has anymore. I think it's one of those that sort of, I guess, time went on, sort of went out of print. Because, uh, you know, rights and such. But, you know, that happens. But, you know, here's the uh, uh, poster, the original poster. Of course, this is the custom kind of slipcover. And I remember when I got this, it was actually a pretty decent, uh, decently priced. It wasn't very expensive, you know. Uh, compared to films that are out of print to, uh, or... It still is. I haven't seen it, though, um, on their website. But if they do, they don't have this slipcover anymore, which has the uh, new artwork. Um, you know, this is a film, I think, if you're a fan of Monty Python, you will love this. Because, obviously, John Cleese and Michael Palin were in Monty Python. And, um, and as a... John Cleese says, uh, and as he wanted to make a film about, you know, uh, how uh, Americans and British uh, people sort of relate and, uh, like, some, like, differences and perhaps similarities. But basically, certain uh, combining the two cultures of sort of together. And he does so in a very effective way in the writing. And, um, he got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Um, I think he should have won this, along with uh, Charles Crichton, who also directed the film. <clears throat> because, uh, well, no, they're... Uh, I don't know, this film is just incredibly well-written. Um uh, Kevin Klein won Best Supporting Actor, which I have no problem with. Um, 
I think the film should have also probably maybe even uh, I haven't looked at all the best picture nominees but I think this could have been a pretty good contender for best picture um, of course that was the year of Rain Man so might probably wouldn't have won best picture it did not win best director and Cleese wasn't nominated for actor which he was very good and um I think it would have been pretty uh, a fairly well deserved Oscar nomination, but I'm not totally upset by his lack of nomination uh, at the Academy for his acting. But you know, I think he should have won the Golden Globe. I know he won the BAFTA for actor, but I think he, he yeah, I, I have no, I don't think he really would have <laughs> beaten Dustin Hoffman for Rain Man. Um, uh, so yeah, I've, I've talked about this from before, probably have like a little link here or there, whatever, you know, they put it, uh, little thing, but yeah, I've, uh, it's been a while since I've, uh, talked about this some years ago, four, almost five, uh, I could see it being about five years ago for... It's 30th anniversary, but maybe it was like a year later. I don't know. Uh, but I wanted to highlight this again because this is a film that is really good. Um, though I I, tr I went to ha I have my mom borrow my DVD of this. It's kind of funny. She's like I, I, I she turned it off after about five or ten minutes because she's like. Kevin Klein was such an idiot. He was so stupid. I couldn't stand him. And, uh, I mean, um, not completely wrong. Um, uh, but yeah, this is, it's just, it's just funny to see how, uh, some people will react to this film. Some people won't be able to stand certain characters. Uh, Otto, she's Wanda. Uh, there's Kenneth. Uh, uh, Ken, he uh, has a stutter. He, 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 he has a fish, and obviously called Wanda, and there's the Wanda the fish. There's some old woman who was a witness in his uh, uh, testimony to, uh, or asked to testify against George, which would uh, definitely put him away, amongst others. But yeah, you know, uh, yeah, he, Kenneth, Kenneth is uh, there to have to kill her, and every time he tries to kill her, uh, a dog dies. It's just very. Uh, it's such an interesting film. Uh, uh, Archie and Wanda get in uh, into a, like a love uh, or into a, like an affair, which of course he's uh, married, so it's kind of a definite no no. And plus, Otto is quite jealous of this, but. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> In nineteen eighty eight, John Cleese, former Python mastermind behind Faulty Towers, teamed up with the uh, veteran alien comedy director uh, Charles Crichton or Crichton. I don't know. Uh, you know, I <laughs> words and names sometimes uh I, I fumble them. And, uh, and it's very evident. Uh, but anyway, he teamed up with him to produce another classic British comedy. And the previous film that guy made, as he's very well known for, is The Lavender Hill Mob. I actually have not seen that, so I don't know. It might be interesting. I like this film a lot, so probably have to at least try to see, uh, 
where I can find the Lavender Hill mob. See if it's streaming anywhere or if it's available fairly uh, affordable somewhere like a DVD or Blu-ray. But yeah, a tale of murder, greed, lust, revenge, and seafood. Well, you know, that's a good way to sum it all up. Um, yeah, I just love this film. It's an excellent movie. Um, again, if you're a fan of Monty Python like me, you'll probably enjoy this quite a bit. If you're not, I don't know. I think you could enjoy this, even if you're not a Monty Python fan, because I think it's just it has a broad enough humor. Uh, but I think if you are a fan, that probably might sort of help. You know, sometimes if you're a fan of something or somebody's work, that could, it could help um, one's enjoyment of a certain movie or a TV show. Um, but, you know, uh, it is what it is, and it's an excellent film, in my opinion. I think it's very funny and i enjoy watching it uh every so often it's just funny and uh i believe this is currently my oldest uh arrow film i've got it's not the first one i got but it's one of the oldest ones um yeah donnie darko is my first arrow home video film and i think it was yeah this one not long after and then Videodrome and RoboCop, I believe, were pretty uh, uh, close uh, close together. Uh, but yeah, RoboCop was after Videodrome. And then uh, True Romance. And uh, by the time you see this video, I have a couple more Arrow uh, released films and uh, I'll talk about those um, probably next month uh, to do some kind of uh, update of uh, movies I've gotten but yeah I really enjoy uh, Fish Cult Wanda um, let me know what you think do you enjoy this movie do you not enjoy this movie why or why not are you like my mom and just uh, couldn't stand like uh, kevin klein or somebody else in the film because you thought they were just too stupid so it turned it off before the entire movie was done i think that'd be interesting to hear <clears throat> um with this movie you know turned it off after a while because the character was so annoying i couldn't stand them uh and I can understand that, you know, sometimes it is, I mean, that's kind of the point of some characters are just annoying. Um, and in a comedy, that can also be where some a good chunk of the comedy comes from. It's like, they're annoying. I know that's part of their character. But it might be annoying to the point where they're so effective, it's just irritating. And you just start, you know, it's like, oh boy. This is grading. I got uh, how long this film? I didn't actually look. 108 minutes. So hour 48 minutes. Um, you know, uh, less than two hours, but obviously over an hour and a half. I could perhaps I could understand why you know some people might not want to endure a film of this length with uh, like a character that might annoy them, such as. Uh, Kevin Klein's auto. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoy this film. You know, jewelry heist where things go right and then somebody sees something and then you get uh, uh, though, though, though it's, it's interesting how uh, the old woman uh, she sees one of them because of you know, they stopped the car to not hit hit the dogs and her. And from there, she sees uh, George. Uh, that's really how he gets in trouble. I know I kind of 
the way I said that earlier uh, might have made it sound a bit vague or or uh, he was just seen in the act and then just got caught and that's not exactly true but anyway that's this that's the uh, my overall uh, thoughts again on this movie uh, again leave your thoughts on this what you think and I hope you'll uh, have a great day have a great weekend hope your week's been great and I'll see you all next time.